come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, the movie review and talk show podcast that comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not. These are the internet radio superstars. Holly. Sean. Michaela. And I'm Colin. And tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by... Michaela. What we watched tonight? We watched X-Men. Ooh, That's X-Men. it. That's the title. There's no <laughs> Days of Future Past. Yeah. There's no the first. this fuck around, that fuck around, nope. X-Men. Yeah. The first. Yes. From the year. 2000. Okay. The millennium. The turn of millennium. Wow. Boy, does it feel like it. Wow. <laughs> Some things. If you have us, the next question I'm is going to be tough. Directed to by. <laughs> okay. How disclaimer dare on this you? Episode, disclaimer on this episode. Brian Singer is a terrible person. We all know this. He did know. bad things on the set of this movie we know in this. particular. Yeah. Um, he did bad things on the set of the movie he did previous Yes. To this. Um, yeah, long not- and storied bad history. Yeah. We do not endorse him just because right. we watch this movie. So that being said, yeah, unfortunately, we, we, the guy made some good movies. Yeah, we don't, He's really not the focus tonight. No. We, we don't endorse him, unlike... Every producer kept giving him a fucking X Men movie. Yeah, years down the line. Uh, yeah. You know who the real villain is? Who produced <sighs> Bohemian Rhapsody? Because John. they brought that guy back to do not only a bad movie, but mm, like I the world forgot. was over Brian Singer. We didn't need any more Brian yeah, Singer. He yeah. could have just gone quietly into that good night, mm-hmm. but he had to come back and torment us with Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah, mm-hmm. man, Wasn't he like working on that one when his career? Yes, fell and apart? he was like working under a fake name. It was yeah. my understanding. He like ghost directing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, there was no, there was an actor um, guy who like ended up ghost directing. I mm-hmm. think that whole that most of that movie because Singer was absent from. At least yeah. this is the the. Yeah. But part. even like even the stories from this movie, he was a terror on set. On top of all the right. unethical things yeah. he was doing, he was an asshole. Yeah. So well, like, I've yeah, he's been it's just yeah. always been bad news. Yep. I remember yeah. there were stories about him on Apt Pupil, mm-hmm. and yeah. you know, it was it was similar to me to like the stories of Victor Salva. Yes, yes, and, yeah. and he still continued to get you know hired. I yes, still can't exactly. Watch Jeepers Creepers. Yeah, like ever since then, I'm just like ah, I can't. Go no big loss for me there. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but, I like that. I like the first one, one, yeah. That first one's good, and I yeah. just like, haven't Until had the you heart know, to go back. Then to you it. watch it, and you're yeah. like, "Oh shit!" Yes, but it, it's the it, same it, with Brian Singer. When you watch his movies, you start to see like you know some uh, predatory stuff. Yeah, yeah. 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 and yeah. and apt, apt pupil was Brad apt Renfro. pupil. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Brad yes, Fuck yeah. 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 Oh. yeah. It's, a, it's a lot of darkness around mm. that movie. Yeah, yeah. Mm. but he had uh, blasted onto the scene mm. with an indie movie. I believe it was an indie movie. Mm. Usual Suspects. Mm-hmm. Correct. Still, it's still a great movie. That's it's still, still a great, great movie. movie. God damn it! Yeah, doesn't and it think- suck? Sucks. Wow! No, look, wow! Is, no, look at all the bad people attached to usual. No, oh my God! Is, is yeah. a murderer's row of oh my God, canceled you're right. Him and Kevin Spacey must have just had a field day. Ooh, right. <laughs> no, I talk about this with people a lot. Is are you able to separate the art from the person who created it? That's right. up to for everybody to define yeah. for themselves. Yeah. Are you I think, able you know? to like? That's yeah. a question that I talk about with people all the time, and it's yeah. not one we're going to dive into necessarily right now because mm-hmm. I feel like that's a whole other. Yeah, issue. I think you have to be able but, to. Yeah. You know, like I mean, if you have a moral objection to, uh, okay. you know, yeah. then you yeah. know, yeah, yeah, yeah. you yeah. understand yeah. that. But yeah, but. disclaimer. There we go. So yeah. we, um, and also, like, I remember very recently coming out was the Lawrence brothers have that podcast Mm -hmm. and Matthew Lawrence said he was up for the role of Iceman against Sean Ashmore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and that he didn't get it because they were asked to send in nudes to the (gasps) director and he wouldn't do it. And like he straight up said that on his podcast. So like, it's not even a secret anymore. So like this is, yeah, that was within the past five or six months. He said that. So the dam broke, I think on the Brian Singer thing. It's like, cause I remember this, the story on apt pupil Mm -hmm. was like kind of, you know, it didn't really, I mean, you heard about it, but it didn't really seem to become like a big, you know, deal. But after the dam broke, I think like all of his past uh, kind of predatory. I feel, well, yeah, I mean, I feel like when Brad Renfro OD'd, that should have been yeah, that was the first trigger. one. Yeah, that should have been a big trigger for right. people. But, Ian um, McKellen was in at Pupil also, which yep. kind of led to his casting in this movie. Um, but I mean, obviously, it was there was a uh, this movie comes from, I guess it's one of the seminal uh, comic book movies right, right? Yes. i mean that's as we're talking about mm-hmm. the history of of how we got to x-men mm-hmm. and everything that's come 
after it. Yep. Mm-hmm. X Men is like a big deal. There's like Superman the movie. Yep. Mm-hmm. Which was directed by Dick Donner, mm-hmm. who produced this movie, mm-hmm. right? And, and then, then Brian Singer would later go and do Superman Returns. Yep. Yeah. Dick Donner movie. Yep. Yeah. And then Batman, mm-hmm. right? Was yep. a big, mm-hmm. big mm-hmm. deal. Yep. And then it's uh, like X Men. Yeah. Big yeah. one. Yeah. Big one. This was a big deal. Spider Man was probably the one after that. Yeah. Then, yep. then yep. we had the Marvel Cinematic right. Universe mm-hmm. after that. We had Actually, the Fox Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yes. Yes. But that reminds me. So Avi Arad, mm-hmm. we always think we hear the name Kevin Feige, right? Yeah. He's the Marvel guy. But Avi Arad was actually like the head of Marvel at the time mm-hmm. that he was the guy who said movies are the <laughs> way to go. And he had rescued Marvel because if you remember, Marvel had sold the rights to all of their characters mm-hmm. to like yep. Canon Films or and they, oh, yeah. Yeah, to Orion. Or to Orion. Yeah, and they had to century. because they were bleeding money. Yep. They yeah. had to years yeah. to get them all back. Yes, and even now we're still. Wasn't it like the Spider-Man movie rights is like a yes. story? Yeah. Well, yeah. Oh yeah, that's Colin's a whole like, <laughs> documentary in and of itself. Yeah. Right. I was like that's still an ongoing thing. Right. Oh. Whole... What if I told you Kevin Feige was a producer on this movie? Yeah, well, His fe- he was there from the beginning pulling strings. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. yeah. um, Avi Arad didn't he? Because like, was he his, his apprentice at this point? <laughs> right. Seriously, I, I feel th- like. Well, the thing yeah. is, this movie got passed around to every single studio, and they all said no. And yeah. uh, basically, every actor that was popular in 1998 to ni- 2000 was asked to be in this movie and said no. Nobody wanted to touch this. This was nuclear That's after crazy. after the failure of Blade and Batman and Robin. Yeah, Blade was a hit. Well, but it was that was. Well, the article I said contributed to like uh, the lack of superhero movies at the end there, but it this was a big gamble. This movie, like this is a seventy five million dollar movie in nineteen ninety well made made in nineteen ninety nine. Yeah. So like Phantom yeah. Menace is out mm-hmm. right now, which is crushing it, you yeah. know. Um wow, weird to think of this movie and Phantom Menace like being in theaters at the same time. That's why I was it? saying, like, yeah. what's his face had a big couple years. Yeah, yeah. in both movies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you gotta yeah. imagine it, yeah. th- this being a big gamble is like, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, it well, this was like kind of nuclear material at the time because Marvel was a worthless company at this mm-hmm. point. They in time. were, yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, this this movie went through twenty eight different scripts because people kept getting hired and quit, and like then a new director would come on and they want to bring in their writer. Mm. Did you guys know Joss Whedon wrote an entire script for this movie that was thrown away because it was. Too snarky, too punchy, that too pop culture reference. Yeah, but isn't that funny? Because that would be the template for the MCU oh, yeah. later on. Yeah. yeah. And so and only. He got, wait, no, he did. He, he Yeah, he did uh, now, some of the couple of the. He, he, he rescued did the Avengers. It with the he Avengers. Did, yeah. Yeah. Like Avengers. A big, yeah. 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 And then he turned out horrible. Right. Yeah. yeah. But, Stay away from the MCU. <laughs> yes. <Jesus Christ. laughs> oh, my God. And then, yeah, I remember when he got taken over to DC for a little bit and yeah. filled and he in, and that was even worse. Yeah. Um, so Josh, Josh Whedon got called to a table read and found out that way that his script had been completely changed. And they only kept two things from his script. Do you guys know what two things they kept? Oh, shit, I used to know this. Uh, it's lines, very obvious or... when you think about it, it, it. Lines. It a, yeah, it's lines. It's a joke? It's lines. Yep. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Not the toad joke. Yes. No. That was a Josh Whedon <laughs> right, it was, oh, yeah. no. And the you're a dick was oh. a Josh That was going to be my oh, yes. That's yeah. the best joke yeah. in the movie. Yeah. That yeah. was going to be my Those so are no the only two things stuff. that made it for. Because I remember, uh, I think I read, because Christopher McQuarrie was part. Yes. Well, mm-hmm. I mean, He was I one guess, of them brought in to write, yep. On the version that we saw, but mm-hmm. the evolution of like X-Men uh, to the screen, like that like started like 10 years or something prior to that because mm-hmm. James Cameron was involved was, at some yeah, point. For a decade, this was being passed around like you mm-hmm. you want this now and no directors or writers wanted to take it. Mm-hmm. Wasn't because I read too that uh, Glenn Danzig was once looked at for Wolverine. Because he's oh. the right build. Wow. He's like, <laughs> he is that shorter he's like, short uh, and wide, like yeah, a bulldog. Yeah. So yeah. Um, and so once Brian Singer got attached, he wanted it to be Russell Crowe, and Russell Crowe was, which makes a lot of sense. I think Russell Crowe would have been a good pick. At yeah, time, especially, yeah, especially at that time. Yeah, and yeah. Russell Crowe didn't want to do it, and he suggested Hugh Jackman. But, so, could you see but, Russell Crowe with that hair? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But the irony, he would have the mutton chops, too. Yeah. yeah. And um, Viggo Mortensen was also, I mean, everybody was on the list if you looked I this mean, up, but yeah. Viggo Mortensen, I think, would have been really good, too. Oh, Yeah. Like they, the, they have that gruff, mm-hmm. like oh yeah, and yeah. there's always uh, what's his name from um, Memento, um, who was considered for it as well. Oh, um, what the fuck's his name? Yeah, that guy. 
Christian Bale? No. No. Memento. No, Memento. No, no, no. no Guy Pierce. Guy Pierce. Guy Pierce. I was going to say, who eventually was. We all blinked on Guy Pierce. Thank you, Michaela. Yes, yeah. Guy Pierce. Yeah. Guy Pierce was, was, was up yeah. there as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like a different movie altogether. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, but the the X Men cartoon has been going strong. Yeah, see that mm-hmm. I this. think is where like that's what really like that cartoon on Fox Kids was yep. like it's a back now big deal. I know, but it, it was X Men X Men ninety seven, which is like yep. c- but it continues from that series. Yeah, yeah. because yeah. so many kids saw it, and then I think you know like even the little uh, um, experience that I had with the X Men prior to the movie because I went into this movie really not knowing much about the X-Men comics. I'd mm-hmm. had like one or two, but I'd seen mm-hmm. some of the, the cartoon show because mm-hmm. there was that Spider-Man show that was also, that was also awesome Fox, yeah. that I think they had shared an hour, right? I used to watch X-Men Origins, which was the teen kid version of the X-Men animated series. So it was like mm-hmm. animated series, but all, it was all about Rogue and Iceman and like the kids at the school oh, as see, teenagers. I just, so my I brother and I one. watched just the standard gotcha. X-Men cartoon. Mm-hmm. That was my, mm-hmm. my familiarity with X-Men. I didn't really know anything before that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. so you know they're they're building, so they're gonna they're gonna make a movie and they're gonna do something that's gonna be serious. I think, uh, you know, because I think this was part of um, Avi Arad, who we mentioned. He um, well, he oversaw Blade, X Men, the Fantastic Four, and Spider Man. I want and Ghost Rider. I think those oh, you remember yeah. the pre Marvel yeah. Universe Punisher? and Punisher. And I think like those are. Can't forget Daredevil. those. Those are in the the Avi Arad era mm-hmm. before yep. the, the cinematic universe and Kevin Feige, right? Yep. So, like, they're developing this thing all these years. They finally hire this, uh, you know, well regarded director mm-hmm. at the time yep. for these films. So they it's plucked like, an indie darling to do a big. It, this big has been box happening since forever. Happening forever. <laughs> yeah. But that was when you were kind of like, you know, because I remember. I guess I lived this. I remember the whole the kind of like, oh, so what is this going to be? You know, it's like they're going to have somebody from like a serious, well-regarded movie make, you know, this Mm -hmm. comic book uh, thing, which I guess you didn't know there was going to be a franchise at that point. No, not at all. No, no, nowadays we're expecting it. Even in watching a movie, the setup for other movies and what have you. It's all in your head now. But when this was coming out, it's just like, holy shit, it's just an X-Men movie. We're not thinking franchise or anything like that. It's just like they're bringing the X-Men to the big screen. Mm -hmm. And you hear the casting is Ian McKellen, you know, and you hear Patrick Stewart. And I think like right there. The only casting that could happen. It's the only, yeah. Yes, it is. It's the only one. Mm -hmm. Like he sat in a fucking captain's chair for how many seasons? mm -hmm. Like that is the guy. Yeah. It's amazing how A-list this cast is from top to bottom. Like even still, I feel like all these people are basically still A-list 24 years later. Didn't uh, Halle Berry, I'm trying to think like when she did this Mm -hmm. in my mind, I I could, I may have the timeline wrong, but it seemed like she was coming off of the Oscar for Monsters Ball. Yeah. Yeah. And and this was like the the movie that she did after. And I remember for like X-Men 2, obviously, mm-hmm. it seemed like they, you know, gave Storm a bigger part. Yep. I thought it was kind of like a smaller part. Yeah. You know, when she you watch it. She hardly has any like, lines in this movie. Yeah. Just yeah. yeah and every line she says, because she's trying to go with that Storm, I think Storm is African in the yeah. comics mm-hmm. yeah. and in the mm-hmm. cartoon. Mm-hmm. So she's trying to go with that accent, but she comes off very soft-spoken. Yeah. Very this. whispery. Very, yeah. like, meek. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's yeah, It's yeah. not the, it's right. not what I picture for Storm. Uh, 2000, okay, so that's what I thought. Um. This movie, she won the Oscar between this and X2. So okay. in X2... Oh, Wasn't they, Catwoman her beefing. post-Oscar movie? What? Wasn't right. Catwoman the one that I think came so. after oh, yeah. the Oscar? So they're trying to... They beef up her role going forward in okay. that. And X3 okay. is the one where she like fought, like, I need a bigger That's, role in this. Yeah. And yeah. so it's like her it's and... It's like her movie. Her yeah. and Logan yeah. are the ones who kind of run that movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The yeah. Brett Ratner one. Because even, um, you know, we were talking about like the Hugh Jackman casting. I'd never heard of him prior to this movie. Never yep. seen anything that he had done. But I remember he was not cast. Like it was Doug Ray Scott mm-hmm. was Wolverine. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, who's Doug Ray Scott? Mm-hmm. From Ever After. Yeah. And, and so he, Mission Impossible. Well, he, yeah. Mission Impossible uh-huh. was the one I think that like caused him to lose this movie. Yes, because right? he got hurt. Oh the yeah, set of Mission Impossible. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that sidelined yeah. him for everything. Basically, so they had to yeah. pause mm-hmm. filming on mm-hmm. that one, and it yep. conflicted with this one. Mm-hmm. And he had to give up Wolverine, and we know how that turned out. Twenty-five yeah. year career, he missed out on. Oh my god! I mean, but that's <laughs> is that the one that keeps him up at night? Like it's got to, right? But who knows if he, if he had been cast, if that would have happened? You know what I mean? Like that's true. That may be put a lot on the shoulders of. Uh, 
of uh, what's his name, Hugh Jackman, who mm-hmm. I mean the the MCU's Robert Downey Jr. Tony Stark before Robert Downey Jr. was kind of like the yeah. mm-hmm. the figure that ran through all of the later MCU. Mm-hmm. Uh, Hugh Jackman's Wolverine was like the through line. So speaking of that, I'm wondering. And still, like this year, we're in the 24th another? year of it like, all. Yeah, I was like, he's not gone. There's yeah, a Deadpool still, and Wolverine movie, yeah, and yeah. Hugh Jackman is front we're getting the yellow spandex. Still playing it. <laughs> yes, we okay, are. now we're that's the what yellow I want spandex. To say because Colin, within this movie, we get the because uh, it's the 2000s. We got to upgrade everything to black leather. That's just what we right. were doing in the late. 90s, I think they look cool. They look, I like those I like black them. leather suits. I have yeah, no yeah. problem with they them. They look awesome. <laughs> and they get better as we go on. But mm-hmm. there's a comment in the movie. It's just like you guys actually wear these out. And mm-hmm. Scott Summers goes, "What were you expecting? Yellow spandex?" In the new X Men cartoon, X Men '97. Cyclops throws a um, yellow spandex uniform to one of the characters, and it's like, it's like, well, you guys go out in this? Like, what were you expecting? Black leather? Mm. You get the, <laughs> That's like, amazing. The reverse of the joke in the X Men '97. I love that. It's like a multiverse stuff is what they're doing now, or whatever. Yeah, well, yeah. The... I mean, now that's what we're getting into. Okay. That's mm-hmm. what we're, I mean. Deadpool and Wolverine is gonna. So it's like change. a Wolverine from yeah. another universe yes. yeah. or whatever. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah, Logan's still dead. Mm-hmm. Spoiler alert, everyone, Logan died. <laughs> How many times has uh, Hugh Jackman played Wolverine? Okay, let's do the math. There's three X-Men. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. Three X-Men's, and then, um, wait, no, every, three of the, the original three trilogy. He's uh-huh. in every X-Men movie. Which, yeah, but he's also in the Deadpool movie. Yeah. And Deadpool X-Men two. Origins. And Origins. And, and Origins. Yeah. X-Men, yeah. Fuck, there's like gotta be there's a lot. Wait, are there two, Google is. There's two there's two X Men Origins, right? Nope. Isn't there? Nope. Yeah. Which well, one did he go to Japan? That's the Wolverine. Okay, the Wolverine. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> X, there's X Men Origins Wolverine, Wolverine. Yeah. Then, then the, the Wolverine, Wolverine yeah. and, then and then Logan. Logan. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It says and it says X-Men Hugh Jackman's it says yeah. Hugh Jackman's Wolverine has appeared in nine of the thirteen X Men movies, but that doesn't account for the Deadpool movies. Only so he's only 13? been in nine of the. Maybe 13, he wasn't yeah. in. He, maybe he wasn't in a few of them. He uh, makes cameos. Like he wasn't in, in that like Dark Phoenix one or. He was in the one before that though. He's in first he's, class. Yeah. He first class was yeah. also in the one before Dark Phoenix Apocalypse, which was yep. also the other. And Brian Days of Singer Future movie. Past. Yeah. Days of Future Past. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's in that one. Yeah. Yeah, it's just mm-hmm. it's. I guess you know I'm bringing it up because I think in Hollywood history, right, he has to be like in a rarefied space yes. of the same actor playing the same role. That many times. I mean, 24 years. But that also, beats all the bonds. That beats, yeah. I mean, like. But also not having anyone else play it. Right. Because there's a lot of characters who have played a character for mm-hmm. a long time. Patrick Stewart's been doing it almost the same amount of time, and he's showed up, what, in, in Univer- uh, Multiverse of Madness. Yeah. So he's still been playing that character, but nobody else has been cast as Wolverine. Right. right. Yeah. Especially, especially because his the way he doesn't age, you don't have to explain it and cast Which a younger actor. Which is great for the character. It's great. It's always they've, Hugh Jackman. And they've used that from, uh, from the whole spectrum of yes. him not being aging, and they've used it for every possible scenario yep. so far mm-hmm. in the X-Men, including sending him into the past yep. and the future. Well, how many, how many movies did RDJ do as Iron Man? He's been in about the same, hasn't he? He did a lot. He did a lot. Yeah. There's but three, he doesn't yeah. show up as randomly. He does, but not. Yeah, like but I mean, the, there was... the Hulk. He's in the original or the Incredible Hulk. Sorry. Yeah. At, at the, at the cameo, end. At the end. Yeah. You know, yeah. So that counts. You yeah, know? that counts. And there's three Iron Man movies. There's three Avengers. And then there was oh, yeah. the yeah. the final Avenger movies. Like, I think he's up there, he too. He might be up there, yeah. too. Yeah. He's in yeah, Spider-Man. Yeah. Like, he's been in a lot of True. But he there started, you know. like, how many years after 2008 this 2008 is the Yeah, so, Iron yeah, he had eight years on him, so... It's an impressive. I'm, obviously, people responded to that character. I think for X Men, even in the comics, mm-hmm. like you knew X Men equals Wolverine, yeah, right? Yeah. I mean, the appeal of that guy, I guess, the guy with the claws. It's just, he's like Freddy Krueger or something. It's fucking just fucking like, cool. It's cool. I don't know how to explain it, but watching it here tonight, I was just like, that's still fucking cool, yeah. where he yeah. just lets the claws out. Yeah. Especially our, the beginning introduction to him, where he lets out two, and the third one sneaks out into the guy's throat, and you're just like, fuck, it's still cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. God damn it. And, and it's they're just a dude with claws. Yeah. 
they're unbreakable and pair that with the healing factor it's like psh, this guy's got it made he can do whatever the fuck he wants right? yeah because i thought like his claws were his special going into it mm-hmm. it was like no his actual his ability is that he heals, heals. yeah like, oh. the claws were an after and fact. had yeah. bone yeah. claws <laughs> yeah which you know that yeah. well that's is. yeah that depends on the movie timeline you watch if bone claws are real right. or not but they're there but, they're in there for a, a couple movies yeah, they bone claws. yeah. <laughs> we're talking about this and i like see images from like all across yeah, all of these movies that you've watched it for 24 years like yep. you have this history of you know uh the x-men even prior to this movie mm-hmm. which some of it doesn't really seem to jibe when you watch this one now you know like mm-hmm. this seems like the big coming out moment for the x-men yeah. mm-hmm. even though you know but then we have few uh first class mm-hmm. and all this stuff that right. are these big world shaking you know events which would have introduced them to the the public you know years mm-hmm. earlier um so, but it it does kind of feel like a, um, I guess now in hindsight, watching it a smaller scale. It's quaint, but I, that's what I love about it compared to yeah. the movies now. Like it's, I love it, how like raw and kind of gritty this movie is, and how it's just everything's done practically for the most part. Like yeah, I saw a part where they had like Scott Summers. They're in the train station, and Scott Summers is just looking around, and in the background, Toad climbs up a wall, and I saw it, and I'm like, that's the actor climbing yeah, up a wall yeah. nowadays. I wouldn't no. even try it. No. There'd be a digital dude climbing up a yeah. wall and that'd be it. That was him. him. There's a lot of wire work. Like a lot of wire, wire, wire work yeah. in this. And yeah. it's like, it, it takes your eye a minute to adjust to wire work because we so rarely see it now, mm-hmm. if ever. And if they are doing wire work, it's not in a real set. It's on mm-hmm. a green screen stage, so it's not the same thing. Yeah, I remember I rewatched this like a year ago and I was like, this feels like a different time like and not even not in a dated way it's just we don't make movies like this anymore yeah it is it's just kind of like you said it's quaint it's yeah. slower it's smaller which is good because i'm tired of everything being like a sky portal i'm tired of the like world. fucking 20 buildings collapsing <laughs> mm-hmm. and huge clouds of digital smoke and the whole world's gonna collapse and cars like, getting thrown down the street yeah, I'm like, yeah. this is just a little this is, smaller this is little just quieter. a really good stunt guy that can climb up a wall yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's really all you it. need sometimes <laughs> Are we fans of the wire work? Yeah, I love yeah. it. Oh, yeah. yes. I love it. It gives yeah. like all the, I guess, you know, it's one of those things where you don't, I see why they go to CG because you're like, how else do you do it? But there's like this kind of weightlessness, I mm-hmm. suppose, to like wire work, you know, where it's yeah. like, okay, that doesn't actually feel like they have any kind of weight, you know, mm-hmm. like when they land on stuff. and But it works for a lot of the powers and how they come across in this movie. And I think it's an advantage using the wire work. Mm-hmm. At least, you know, Storm feels like she's actually there, you know, like, right. you know, landing on the scene. And they do that with Magneto. A lot. It's the mm-hmm. old Superman effect. It's, right? Of, yeah. You know. yeah. Oh, and it yeah. works because it's real people doing real things yeah, like in a real set. Halle Berry was in that elevator shaft yeah. coming up, yep. was, you know, uh, before she uh, cracks a really bad joke and fries it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I like that they have That's to, the, how many times they have to use their powers together to accomplish a yeah, goal. That I feels like, very video yes. gamey and I like, I like the it. the teamwork. Yeah, the teamwork <laughs> is good. You're, you know? you're the X-Men. You're supposed to be a team. Right. I well, like it. Well, especially because there's times if you think about who's doing what in the movie, it makes no sense. Like when Storm is inside a building snooping around, you're like, wait, wait, wait. Why Why are you inside at all? What can you do to help mm-hmm. us? You don't have any special abilities right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, if anything, you should be outside guarding the place where right. you can be connected yeah, to your weather system. in the middle of a tornado that yeah. you're controlling. Yeah, <laughs> but it's like, she's she's not good at anything, so why is she, I mean, we do know? see her do stuff inside. That it, yeah, she, yeah, I mean, she's turn, got the wind, yeah. she's got the electricity. Right. She's still doing good. I just don't know how that's benefiting looking for a missing person. You know what I'm saying? Like... <laughs> At least, you know, Professor X can sense yeah. their brain waves and shit mm-hmm. and try and track them down. She can but... give them cover for the jet. Mm-hmm. And man, Cy- sometimes Cyclops seems like he's more trouble than he's worth, right? Like this guy is <laughs> fucking, yeah, like, put wow. A, put a, what, like a, one of those, you know, those things where you can, uh, y- if you lose your glasses, they're, they're just connected. Yes. Like, so, like, the band? Band? <laughs> tighten it up, bro. Stop Seriously. having people take your fucking visor off. Why do you not? Yeah, have like a goggles band that keeps them on. Something like that, yeah. or 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 do what uh, Jordy LaForge did in later seasons. Do get something to your yeah. eyes done. Yeah. You don't have to wear done. the fucking goggles right. anymore. But is that like? I mean, you know, part of it, I suppose, is the appeal of the X Men. Right? It's like their their powers are both a blessing and a curse. Yeah. Right. You kind of get yeah. like because the, they can go wrong. Yeah, mm-hmm. and so mm-hmm. you've got a group of people who are kind of tortured because they you know don't fit in with society and they have mm-hmm. these abilities. Um, the final movie, I think, it was it's credited to David Hayter, the writer, mm-hmm. right? Yep. And David Hayter, like a lot of people, 
do they know? Like he's the voice he's, of Solid Snake in yeah. the Metal Gear Solid. Yes. And I yep. think he wrote the but he's Watchmen. Written, yes, he's I was gonna say he's written a lot of movies I like. He wrote this, yeah. X Men Two, um, The Watchmen, and then I don't like it, but he wrote the Scorpion King. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so, everyone yeah. needs a paycheck. Right. Yeah, yeah I forgot David Hayter was mm-hmm. like wrote shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Damn. And so it has a the more intimate scale, you're saying. Uh, probably the, I'm assuming like a lot of that is budgetary back then. Mm-hmm. They couldn't do, you know, you couldn't lift half of a continent off and destroy it. Right. Uh, <laughs> in a way that would look good. Yeah. No, but in the, I mean, you know, they'll get there at the third one. Mm-hmm. We're lifting Golden Gate bridges and yep. moving them places. And mm-hmm. shit. But it forces the writer to come up with scenes where like the characters are actually talking to each other. Do you feel that you got to know the X-Men more in this movie than you did in like the subsequent sequels? I like the slice of life stuff in this movie. I like Rogue's little origin story i like how it converges with logan's i like the it's not really origin story because but also it feels like a lot of movie happens before this movie yeah. Yeah. you know yeah. when the character set up yeah exactly yeah. but for professor x is like i realized this watch around how much expo dump talking professor x does it's yeah. every it's scene yeah. every scene long. he's like so eric and i go back to this day and then you know this whole thing happened he's yeah. describing right. a whole other movie but it's, it's so funny it. though like I, I watched this so many times mm-hmm. when it came yeah. out, but Same. there was so much that I didn't remember about this movie. Like because we're first for, watching it in HD for the first time, <laughs> probably, like, which to- we had a real problem with. I totally forgot mm-hmm. that we start this movie in the Holocaust. I, yeah, wow, bold move. Wow, like you already know that's this prep. No one dark thinks start. Everyone already thinks this is a gamble of a movie to make, and you're saying I'm gonna start. Let's remind the people of a, of a terrible tragedy. <laughs> like, I mean, I, I don't know if this was your intention, but within the first like few minutes, I'm like. Okay, I'm with Magneto the I, whole time. That's kind of I don't, the, I don't yeah. think Magneto's wrong. The whole time, wrong. like for the rest of the movie, you're I'm saying. getting saying Magneto did nothing wrong. He's, <laughs> he's, a, he's, looking a, at, he's looking at this like, <laughs> I can see the second Holocaust coming, and I'm like, bro, I see it and too. Sh- and Charles I is trying you. to talk him out of it. I know. It's even, like a kid. He's not wrong. I even agree. now, Magneto's with not the wrong. X-Men 97 cartoon series, there's mm-hmm. been trends online going Magneto was right. Yeah. Because yeah. you've come to a point of storyline and at some point you're always looking at me and like, yeah, he's got a point. Yes. He he's always point. had a real good point. Always. He's a little extreme, mm-hmm. but he's always had a good point. Yeah. So this, I guess, is the this is the appeal of the X-Men storyline, right? I mean, it came out of the 60s and so it was, uh, you know, the turbulent 60s, I think, right? Mm-hmm. And so people were able to read like, you know, um, I guess like well, I, I think even um, Singer was trying to pitch the ideas like these two ideas are like Malcolm X and Dr. Martin Luther mm. King. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah. this is the elevating of the comic book property to appeal to main, mainstream audiences right. where comic book readers, I'm sure, are always sitting there going like X-Men is great literature, yes. you know, yes. <laughs> but, you know, in order to kind of bridge that gap to mainstream audiences, you kind of have to couch it, you know, mm-hmm. in this so it's like an elevation of we're actually making a film. Yes. You know? Yeah. It's about it's very serious. Something. Yeah. It's an yes. allegory. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. And and who the person who who drives it home, I forget the actor's name, who's playing the Senator Kelly. Bruce uh, Davison? Is that his name? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Bruce Davidson, mm-hmm. who's doing a very good job of playing our current speaker of the house. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> in a terrifying way. Isn't it crazy how some things never change? Some things and never this change. is a like, 24 year old movie that feels right. like it could have been written yesterday. And that role is pitch perfect to today. Yes, exactly. So. And that's that's the thing I love about X Men content in general, is I feel like there's a lot more at stake in the X-Men yeah. universe than some other comic book things in not just on a personal level and on a like larger scale each right. character has their own personal struggle with the blessing and the curse but then it also feeds into this bigger struggle of how do we function in society mm. and that that's is what the I nice love thing about, it. about mutants what have you because you can always go back to that personal struggle because mm-hmm. especially because mm-hmm. they each have all uh, different separate powers that comes with different pros and cons and shit they got to deal with and everything yeah. which is great uh, character stuff to work on mm-hmm. for them so mm-hmm. it's it's really fun with this group of character mm-hmm. so who do we have as our group in this movie and i guess and who plays them who's the cast mm-hmm. that we got we've got wheels which is uh, uh <laughs> i like that joke patrick, patrick stewart, stewart. Mm-hmm. Uh, again the joke. only casting mm-hmm. you could do is mm-hmm. well for patrick stewart i guess the question that i have is um is the x-men casting like a blessing to his career because i mean he had obviously picard and right that's going to be it but i i think the show was over at that yes. point oh yeah the show Definitely. was over in like the 90 
Yeah. yeah. 1990. So it's like, I mean, if you look at his career, if he didn't have X-Men, would that have been, you know, I mean, because that gave yeah. him like a like, second, a whole a second, second wind. wind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, to, but to be fair, probably, I think I think he always would have been a stage actor. Yeah, done this. theater and stuff. Because he's, he's always True. done like mm-hmm. British stage acting. Like, yep. So I think he would have been fine. Mm-hmm. But Right. But yeah. But yeah. him and his best friend Ian McKellen were just like, you want to do this movie together? Right. We play opposites with different ideologies and mm-hmm. we, you know, kind of. Uh, spar with each other. They have like, great chemistry. Right. Yeah, they do. Such good chemistry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And We're I, the future, Charles, not them. That's like oh, yes. Toby and I say that all Charles. the time. That is the <laughs> line from the movie. It's so good. Mm-hmm. He's so good when he said mm-hmm. that. Thing, I used to just walk in the house going, Charles? Yes. The thing that blows my mind from this movie and will always blow my mind is that neither one of them knew how to play chess before this movie. Right. Yeah. They had to be caught. Yeah. Blows my mind. Sir Ian McKellen and is Patrick Stewart a the, sir? Yes, they the both sir are. Sir Patrick Stewart the, didn't know how to play the chess. The two most distinguished Perfect British gentlemen of all time. Who look yeah. like the smartest people Neither ever. Speak one of like them. the smartest people in the world. Neither one of them <laughs> played chess until this movie. That's, that's funny. Yeah. That's, and that blows my mind. That's, do they still do that in those current movies with them playing chess, right? That's in every movie? That's yeah. the thing. Yeah. yeah. Well, that is the, that's the, the metaphor for their the relationship. End of the, oh, my right God. There. The second I, movie? I do you remember the end of the second movie where the <laughs> he's got the metal chess piece and he puts his hand out and it that's starts to quiver? Movie. The third movie? <gasps> is that the third one? Damn it. Yeah, because everyone gets Fuck, I forgot about that. Something that was a like good ending. Yes, movie. that was a good ending. <laughs> but yeah, it's solid. it quivers a little bit, and it's like yeah, that chess yeah. Uh, uh, back and forth hasn't been portrayed uh, this good since Berserker. When, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when Berserker, when, when the yeah. Berserker, the, the, the sheriff bear, oh, right. and the Berserker, oh, yes, yes, and the Berserker George Buckflower are playing chess. Yeah, <laughs> Jesus Christ, go back and listen to our that. Berserker yeah. episode. It's fantastic. I thought you were gonna go back like to like the devil nope. playing chess. No, 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 no. Berserker. Berserker. Yeah. All right, okay. <laughs> Anyways, we're, we're going very, through we're the cast. <laughs> yeah. Well, you've got uh, okay. So Hugh Jackman, yeah. obviously, this is the movie that made his career, right? Right. Um, and then, but that motherfucker would have been a star regardless. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, so matter goddamn what, talented. no matter what. No matter what, because if nothing else, like his stage presence, I mean, well, in his range. I mean, he's it's done s- movies across the mm-hmm. gamut of it's stuff. Amazing. You know that he just seems to be one of those kind of everyman mm-hmm. actors that you can plug into almost anything and. And it works. Yeah, is it tad more beautiful than most everyone? But okay. <laughs> yes. And we got yes. um, uh, Halle Berry is oh, sing, sing, storm. And sing yeah. and dance and Jesus. perfect man. <laughs> and uh, yeah, Halle Berry, right? Because mm-hmm. she yep. was beautiful. successful from all mm-hmm. the movies that she had done mm-hmm. in her career prior. Um, yeah, Babs got her this job. <laughs> that one, Babs. Boomerang. Wait, was uh, Swordfish? Bond, Bond swordfish came that came out after. Sword it had the Swordfish got both, was it's after because it was teamed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was going to say it's got it because it's got Hugh Jackman in there. <laughs> wasn't yeah. there a Bond movie before this? No, I think it was after the Oscar. I want to feel like everything came after this. It was after the, yeah, and after the It was the like Oscar. X-Men and then, you know, Oscar and then all the other stuff. Yeah, I, I was going to say this. Uh, she did the indies and some other yeah, stuff. Yeah, the but, Spike Lee movies. and Right. Yeah. Um, we've got... Uh, 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 well, Mars, but to, James Marston is on yeah. the team. So Cyclops, yep. um, also great casting as yeah, the perfect Love Dick James Marston. Yep. Cyclops. Is he like mostly in Brian Singer movies? Is that what I'm like remembering? Yeah. I mean, and obviously I mean, Westworld is like yep. a big deal now. He's and on he was, Thirty Rock. He's got a couple he's Sonic Rock. movies under his yeah. belt. Yeah. Well, and he did a bunch of like rom coms. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Slasher movies, wasn't he yeah. in? Uh, in not the, the Faculty. Yeah. Uh, no, uh, no, it was the Disturbing Behavior. Yeah, the Blue Ribbon Society. Yeah. Um. Okay, so I'm going through like the the good, and then Anna Paquin. Yes, Anna Paquin. Who oh, I, this is where I fell in love with Anna Paquin. It, it, we all did as a nation. We fell in love with. Oh, Anna she Paquin. had won the Oscar, right? Yes, when for she was Fly very Away Home, right? No, it was no, 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 the it was piano. The piano. The piano. Yeah. She was like though eleven or you something. You bring up Fly Away like Home, and I'm just like, holy like, shit! I watched that movie a lot. Yeah, Those yeah. fucking geese. Anna Paquin's mm-hmm. been working since she was like a baby. I'm still traumatized. And won the Oscar so young. I'm still traumatized by her being. Um, Jeff Daniels' daughter in Fly Away Home, and then they fuck in The Squid and the Whale. That's, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, yes. Oh, yes. no. It's I wonder how they it, felt about that. That messes up my head yeah. so much. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> I love her, though. I, and I, I she's great. Her. She is always a value add when she shows yeah. up in something. It always goes up a point with her in it. Because, oh, was this, was this right after Almost Famous or right before? Or at the same time. Almost Famous is what, 99? Oh, I felt like that was 99. This, right? Yeah. yeah. No, 99? Was, so, what, yeah. So that came out before this. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Okay, all right. So that's yeah. why she was on the yeah. Yeah, okay on the casting list. Mm-hmm. And pre True Blood. Mm-hmm. Yep. Two thousand, almost famous. Mm-hmm. So okay, same year. Oh, there you go. Okay. Good year for her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I love that movie. 
So She's like, I want an Oscar every so year. We've got, and we've got, uh, on the bad guy side, we've got Ray Park as uh, Toad. Toad. Yep. And he had just come off Phantom Menace. Phantom Menace. Yeah. Big year for Ray Park. Yeah. Yeah. Gives time, a little yeah. Phantom Menace in this movie with his little <laughs> swinging of his yeah, dual yeah. lightsaber. Yeah. We got him. You're like, you recognize that footwork. Yep. Yeah. And it's got, Darth Maul. And right we have he's t- just so good. <laughs> I know. He's good. He's good at this role, too. He is. And he's having so much fun. You can just tell. And then we have Tyler Maine as Sabretooth. Future Michael Myers. Yeah, that's the weird one, right? It's like, yeah. and he became Michael Myers in the right. Rob Zombie movie. He was a wrestler. At one point, he was. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Okay. Way back in the day, yeah, yeah he was a wrestler. And uh, Rebecca Romaine. Yeah, Stamos. Stamos. At this Stamos. point in time. Forget the yeah. Stamos. <laughs> she was a Stamos yes. at this point. I knew, like, when 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 I saw pictures of her without the makeup on, I was mm-hmm. like, oh, I recognize her. But, you know, then, you know. And it was such a big thing when we learned about, like, the body makeup. It was, or, oh, it yeah. was, that was worldwide news. That was huge. Because, <laughs> yeah. like, the first time we'd seen this. Like, right. Really. I remember watching those, like, time lapse videos of them applying, applying it all to it? her. Oh, yeah. yeah. And oh, it's, like, hours and, and she hours. And every hours. talk show, and they're like, you're, so you're basically naked in this movie. Yep. Like, she's yep. Like, oh, yes, I yeah. am. I mean, yeah, it is kind of an amazing makeup. Up, and mm-hmm. you know, like a brave performance, oh I guess, if she's yeah. going to do yeah. it. I mean, she's a model, I suppose, yeah. you know, so she's, you know, confident in her physique, but she's kicking her feet in the air in this outfit a lot. Yeah, yeah. and I'm sure leaving blue paint everywhere, everywhere. that, yeah. that yeah. she everywhere. went. But yeah. there's scenes where she's out and you can see her breath, and it's like, yeah. wow, that's, oh you know, God. but yeah. it is. Uh, they can make whole documentaries on that makeup process from mm-hmm. where it started in this to where it ended up with Jennifer Lawrence. Okay. She ended up in sleeves and a suit yeah. rather than paint. Well, yeah, Jennifer but Lawrence has like a more modest, like, yeah, she they t- she threatened to walk from those movies because she didn't want to wear the whole makeup anymore. Which bitch don't take the job then. And yeah, so instead, kinda... they came up with the Jennifer Lawrence version of Mystique, which they is did. just a blonde girl. So she's just herself in those movies. They did, yeah. Like no, no, that this is, is not. She's like, no, we want you blue. This yeah. is we're actually because she here. doesn't yeah. look anything like the the Rebecca Romijn Stamos yeah. version. Doesn't look anything like the comic version that's like a big she's departure. got like the long hair in yeah. the comic but she's still blue she's skin, not naked. but it's, i think yeah. it's more smoother but she wears a, yeah. a white and black and blue suit most of so the time. it's a risque idea we're just mm-hmm. gonna make her a naked yes. girl in blue in mm-hmm. a pg-13 movie they're, mm-hmm. they're like oh, we only get one shot of this x-men movie we got to get everything in here we right. need a naked blue girl yep. yeah i mean i get it yep <laughs> right so um magneto over there he's got the b team yeah the, I mean, the, the brotherhood of mutants. But yes. they're the, I mean, like, the, the competency not the level best. This is not a good lineup. Tooths. <laughs> My, Mystique's a solid choice. And yes, she's carrying Mystique's that great. team. Yeah, she's she's yeah, doing all the she's, work. And, I mean, Toad, she, Yeah, she's the, the... Toad's handy. He's handy. Toad's handy. She's the um, Black Widow of the group. Yes, okay. she is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Sabretooth, who... <laughs> what a just... He's, he's, he's the a muscle. Big, he's a big dumb animal. Yeah, he's the muscle. Yeah, he's the muscle. But it does seem like, you know, Magneto is surrounded by, like, you know, idiots. Yes. I mean, aside from maybe Mystique, Mm -hmm. you know, (laughs) basically, but versus, like, Charles Xavier's school of gifted children. Yeah, who he's trained yeah. and yes. educated. And, the yeah. rich kids, yes. Yeah. <laughs> they have a stable yes. at their school. The yeah. private school yeah. kids, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, he so is this private school versus public school, basically? <laughs> it kind of feels like that. Okay, here's the great thing about X-Men, Sean, is oh. because the struggles are kind of humanly universal, yes, you can you apply, can apply anything. anything to X-Men because great. a lot of the reads of X-Men 2 are that it's like an allegory about being gay it's coming gay out. Parable. It's gay yeah. parable. Well, it's because of that one scene where he makes it like... Yeah, I mean, it's it I is say a coming it's out scene, but it's, it is. Yeah, it, Have you tried not being a mutant? Yeah, That's, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> it's, well, I mean, you yeah. could yeah. read yeah. that into this, I yeah. guess. You know, like, That's the great thing about it. You can yeah. project yeah. whatever is on right. you I think want that yeah. leans yeah. into it more. Yeah. Right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, because I think originally it was a civil rights uh, yeah. you know, yeah. struggle yeah. with mm-hmm. the 60s comics that they kind of adapted. They just never get Sabretooth right in these movies. So what? It's, well, well, we got Liev Schreiber it, I was like, later it, on. We yeah. need an in between of this one and Liev Schreiber. I yeah. agree. We need an in between. Mm-hmm. I agree because one it's is like one Liev Schreiber shot... gr- is cool, and yes. I think it's almost there. But yeah. I need a little more of this one. Right. Mm-hmm. Plus, he's a good actor. Yeah. But yeah, it needs a little Schreiber, bit yeah. more because what do we get? He's got like he's still got he's like buzz cut, but he's got like yeah. teeth and claws. It's like yeah. a little more animalistic for him. But yeah. Liam Schreiber is so good, though. Well, let me ask you this. Just add a little bit more. (laughs) I am not. A little uh, more cats. A little more more stage show cats into it. Okay, I got you. I'm not comic uh, versed on the history of this. So uh, in the comics, Sabretooth is 
Wolverine. Victor Creed. Yeah. And I think it's his brother, brother? or half brother. It's his brother. His half in the brother. comics. Yeah. Because yeah. I know they bring that out in the later movies. Yeah, they so. don't acknowledge okay. it in this one. I know that's though, kind of weird that they wouldn't if that was already the lore. They may I, have thought it was I like, it's like too much. Well, I feel like they ignored many things. There was a movie. cut of this movie that was 45 minutes longer. Uh, really? Did they so, add yes. that to it? Because I, I feel well, there like they is weren't a, going that. Well, there I mean, a DVD I, release called X Men 1.5. Yeah, I had that. Yeah. Which um, is, I think the extended. But th- th- I mean, this movie was a total shit show just because of what it went through to even get produced. Honestly, that who I, knows what got lost. Like you all know? of the like this movie mm-hmm. expedition that you or ex- yeah. exposition that you gave us yeah. at the beginning of this. I'm impressed that this movie turned out the way it did. That it's even like sensical at all. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I know. But they so Brian Singer wanted an additional five million dollars to include Beast. And two other characters, and with a cameo of Gambit, just a cameo of him like Ugh. throwing cards, which like don't tease us. Just like that, I wanted, you know? Gambit yeah. So and the much. studio said no, we're already spending seventy five million, so all those characters got. I'm kind of surprised they didn't go with Beast. Beast being one of the original. He was one X-Men. of the main. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's because one of the there's OGs. a lot of them that don't get introduced. But until think the about or how much money you save by just making Jean Grey kind of fill his role. And oh, that's, very you know, true. That's Plus, true. you get to wait a few years to also have the perfect casting and Kelsey Grammer. Yes, and then Again, the special effects will be better. Yeah. 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 yeah, Actually, and, shit, we forgot about Fomka Jansen. Yeah. For, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Also, yes. the movie where I fell in love with Fomka Jansen. <laughs> yeah. That and the faculty, but damn. I know, that's a well, like, the casting of her and Hugh Jackman is really good because, mm-hmm. like, the sexual tension between mm-hmm. them is like, wow. <laughs> they pretty <laughs> like, much fuck in the second movie. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Even though she's, you know, she's uh, possessed by the Dark Phoenix when it happens. Um, I mean, that's the best. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Just gonna, um, yeah. Third movie. You keep going back. You keep pulling <laughs> up second. shit from the third. No, she's possessed in the third movie with the Dark Phoenix. Yeah, but the, the second one was... isn't she fighting it? Yeah, but not. Like it's it's it, she's popping in and bit, out. A bit. No, uh, it c- kind of. It, we're All getting a lot of hints together. of it, and at the end, she yeah. gets a little more fiery and flary. Yeah. But in the third one's the one where she's like possessed by it. Mm-hmm. I think she fucks Wolverine. She mm-hmm. liquidizes um, Cyclops. And yeah, shit. she dies at the end of the second one, right? Third one. The, third no, second one. Yeah, yeah. And then she comes back yeah. as the dark. Spoilers. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, we cannot talk about <laughs> the second one. The second one's so good. Okay. The- Oh man, that third one though, when Magneto turns on Mystique, that shit's so cold. I hate that. We don't need you anymore, bitch. Right, like, like you're he, not a yeah. anymore. Sorry. Yeah, that shit's cold. She should slap so the shit so out of her. isn't so bad. It's, I, it's I, bad. I, the third one's not so bad. <laughs> it's a Brett Ratner movie, so it's a step down in quality from these movies. I don't, but. I don't want to be. I just seem to be put in the position of defending Brett Ratner movies because we got Red Dragon, we got <laughs> X3. <laughs> yes. Like. I like Red Dragon. I mean, Red Dragon's really good. Um, okay, yeah. Mm-hmm. X3. X3 is not as bad as you well, remember. Well, X2 Especially revolves. Especially when we get to Dark Phoenix It's mostly Phoenix a, Lo- a Logan story in yeah, X2. It's yeah, because it's now His origin had, story. Had the comics done that, the origin. Oh, yeah. I'm sure. The comics yeah. have explored so much stuff by the time we got to these movies. Mm-hmm. Did they? Because I thought I that so. was a thing that maybe the movie had, that the comics had never explained I, his origin I, uh, um, i'm kind of speaking on my ass here i th- i think what we get as far as his origin in the movies is a little different than everything they've done in the comics i think mm-hmm. most of some of the stuff Our the experiment comic listeners hate us right probably yeah, and i'm probably sorry. wrong but i mean I there's always comics. Sorry, guys. obviously <laughs> the experimentation on logan and all that stuff happens in the comics i believe but okay i could be completely well anyways wrong. this movie this, yeah. <laughs> this movie um so the kind of main thrust of the movie is that the un is gathering 100 world leaders at the Statue of Liberty. Like, well, why? Yep. Beca- like, what do you mean, why? It makes I perfect it. sense. You better have the best security the world has ever seen if you're doing it. Oh, no, this is like pretty wild. This is a sniper's it's symbolic delight. It's, it's symbolic. Ellis Island is the melting pot of the U.S. And so, so like, we shall melt all of these leaders. Yes. It's one mutant. <laughs> and it's like, you're right, Sean. Like, you could go right up in the torch and all these people's heads Gone. are wide open just Gone. sitting in folding yeah. chairs. <laughs> it is a sniper dream. But, I mean, you're you're tempting the crazies by doing this, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, there's no designated survivor situation here, you're telling me? Like, we don't even have all of our senators in one building at one time. Uh, like, <laughs> And they're putting 100 of the world leaders together for what? Just to say they did it? That was I what I, I can't. Even, I, I, I yeah. miss. I I don't yeah. remember what the reason right, was. Right. Right. It was just. And I'm, it's, and I'm it's fine a plot it. mechanic. Right. right. It's like and we got to get everybody together. I'm fine that we don't go too deep into it because it wouldn't really matter. Right. Yeah. Right. It doesn't matter. It it lends to like it's like the MacGuffin, you right. know, plot thing. Yes. It's like, mm-hmm. well, what is the threat? You right. know, Magneto, and I'm I'm not even sure I understand how this thing works. It's just like okay. Is this like a comic booky kind of thing where like Magneto's gonna you know control this 
spinny thing yeah. that's gonna somehow <laughs> the spinny thing the spinny radiation. thing from contact they yeah. shrunk it down yeah and the radiation will turn regular people into mutants this is how he is going to because there's the threat of I guess a uh, mutant registration law yeah. yes right which I guess I didn't think like uh, the Bruce Davidson's concerns were completely outside the That's you know the they're great not thing about X Men yeah. it's thing. all so gray He's everything like, it it here, you know yeah. what's to prevent He's, like the crazy one from doing Right, right. His you know. questions are valid. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so they're, but they're like, you know, the Brotherhood of Mutants is like, well, we're going to turn him into a mutant. Yep. And Which so, at this point, I'm like, sign me up. Yeah. Sounds you're going to have, oh, but you turn into a puddle. You turn to Alex I, Mack. I, I, I'm like, <laughs> but, like, wait a second. Magneto has a mutant maker. Like, put me in that bitch. I want to see mutant it. Mutant maker. Yeah. 1999. But I that's know. what's interesting he about it. He only tested on one person. Yeah. But, and then he doesn't see. I mean, through no fault, no fault of his own, Magneto's fault, mm-hmm. uh, that he doesn't see how the experiment turns out. Right. Because Sabretooth fucks up yeah. Yeah. and lets well, him slide off a cliff. The guy's a jelly man. You know? yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, he uh, jellied Mr. off a Stretch, cliff. You know? <laughs> yeah, to be um, fair, he was trying to hold on to KY. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Gonna gonna work. Work. yeah. But I guess that was the question that, you know, the kind of the movie poses because Storm's like, you know, like, well, Magneto doesn't know that he dies. That so you're actually going to kill all these people in New York City. Right. Would Magneto still do it? If he was going to kill all these people, that's never really addressed. Right. Because yeah. Magneto's like, I just don't believe what you're telling me because you're mm-hmm. trying to stop me from doing it. Right. That. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But you'd want to hope if he saw it, the science and it's just like they will all end up liquefying and dying. And you're kind yeah. of your point. You're going to be I mean, looking at He kind of wins guy. either way. Right. In what if, way? They, if they all turn into mutants. He's got a bunch of mutants, and they're all on a level playing field. Yeah. If they all die, his problem solved. Yeah, too. you've well, killed the I opposition. Think he makes himself a yeah. bigger Which enemy. Is us. If, if they all die. <laughs> yeah. Well, we see earlier in the movie when he's got all the guns turned on the cops. Yeah, he doesn't want to kill anyone. Right. No. He says, like, "Charles, don't make me do this." Yeah. yeah. He literally has that bullet spinning just like in midair. Yeah. yeah. He doesn't want to kill anyone. Yeah. Yeah, I think if he were, I don't. But I don't think. Because then that just makes him Hitler, right? Exactly. So he, yeah. he can't the man's be also been through a lot. I don't think he's quite rational. I think he needs some mental point. health help, yeah. I think so, yeah. I think so. So he might not be, you know, kind of can't see the forest for the trees at this point. Yeah. But the irony is his lackeys have no problem. They're like, they are killers. They're yes. straight out killers. And he just kind of turns a blind eye to that, mm-hmm. I guess, because it's in service. He's of- like, get it done. <laughs> and yeah. they get it done. <laughs> Uh Yeah, so Bruce Davidson ends up liquefying and uh, then... Changing his mind. Like he's, he now, he now sees the uh, mutant plight. He's he is like, I'm not so afraid anymore. I know those scenes are like well orchestrated. Uh-huh. Like I it's couldn't good. go to another hospital because they'd treat me like a mutant. Like a mutant, yeah. you know. Yeah. That's yeah. good. Um, this all leads to a showdown on uh, Ellis Island. But I mean, even before we get there, there's I guess like maybe the strength of the movie is like the scenes that don't because those plot kind of centric things where you have crazy you know machines doing whatever and all that it's kind of like okay well we have to do that because there has to be some kind of you know right it's like the whipped cream on top of everything it has to be the sci-fi tech in this movie yeah Mm -hmm. yeah but it is like wolverine for being like this badass you know who just hangs out in uh fight clubs in uh (laughs) the the one canadian fight club you know i remember when i first saw this movie in 2000 you don't even think about it now but all the tvs are widescreen we didn't have widescreen tvs back then wow it was, the, you know, the near future. And I'm like, yeah. all the TVs that they're looking at in the movie are why. Yeah. Um, but yeah, wow. but he has like, you know, it gives a kind of dimension to this character. He does have a heart, yeah. I guess, you know, because mm-hmm. there is that question of is he as the audience's surrogate character mm-hmm. going to go with the good guys or the bad guys? Mm-hmm. He asks, you know, like, or is he just on his own? It's like yeah. I'm a lone wolf. Mm-hmm. Like, he will he get over that stuff at some point? Will he show his heart? Mm-hmm. Will he care for the young girl? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but he does. I he guess will. that's the yeah. thing. Um, I'm trying to think like the other like interpersonal stuff. I mean, you really get like Charles and 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 we get a love triangle. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not a rhombus. No one else is in there yet. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and then, then the love triangle there. with uh, you know, yeah, with um, Samka Jensen and uh, Wolverine and Cyclops. Yep. Yeah, I always, I guess I didn't have the imagination going into it. You hear like, you know, there's a guy who can control mag- magnetism mm-hmm. and you're like, okay. But like, <laughs> he's like dope. the most fearsome. Like- it's awesome. <laughs> and it yeah. only gets better as the movies go on. He does oh, yeah. cool shit. And yeah, yeah, he does. Every X-Men movie, you can count on a cool Magneto scene at least. A hundred percent. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. 
Didn't, well, he, get, it, didn't he get married at some point and then his wife he? was taken from him? And in the got all mad. in the um, first class universe, he there's time. There's I don't time even stretches. know that. <laughs> he has a, a wife and daughter, and they get murdered, so he gets brought back for apocalypse. Oh it's, my god! Okay, the, I don't, uh, we don't somebody, need this. No, somebody wrote an article. They're just like we're gonna try and go through the fucking messed up timelines of oh, the X Men, the Fox X Men series. How far? And it's just mm-hmm. all over the place. How far, Michaela? Have you gone into the X Men movie? Oh, I've uh, seen them all. Have you seen oh, them all? You watched Dark all. Phoenix. I watched Dark Phoenix, yeah. and so Are it's really okay? distracting because Sophie Turner the is. Uh, yeah, Are you see, okay? I didn't see it in no. <laughs> Why? Yeah. My brother wanted to see it. It okay. was not good. I understand. I, that's that's the only not one good. I think I haven't yeah. seen. I gave up. Like I should have yeah. given up a long time I ago. I, I mean, I, I haven't watch, enjoyed one for yeah. a long time. I didn't watch Apocalypse. I saw that and hated it. I'm like, I'm done. I hated that movie. No, first Logan is the last one I enjoyed. If that counts. Oh, yeah, it's yeah, kind of, yeah. yeah. First Logan's class, fantastic. first I think first class was the last like X Men X Men movie. I'm I like that really one because it was I like okay, one. this is a new like interesting. Right. You and know, Kevin, Kevin Bacon. Bacon's yeah. a bad guy. Yeah, and, you know, yeah I roll like a quarter one. through his head. I will say. Fastbender and McAvoy are the perfect younger casting. For I was gonna say two. I perfect. love them in yeah. those like roles. Yeah. I think they're fantastic. Mm-hmm. I like them. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's. Yeah, it's 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 amazing to chart their careers when they you know when they got those jobs. Mm-hmm. versus all the stuff they went through and they're still doing even Jennifer right. Lawrence because they all started out m- more so relatively unknown I don't think had Jennifer Lawrence won the Oscar when she she won that in 2009 yeah, yeah. and so yeah and when she got into it but yeah it's amazing kind of to see where they were and how long they stuck with it considering mm-hmm. like their worlds were expanding as far as movie roles and mm-hmm. shit like that and they're you know being famous and everything i love that you can yeah. stuck with it even though this franchise isn't in a great spot right now you still get alias yeah. people coming to it all the time oscar mm-hmm. isaac was apocalypse yeah he was you know yeah. Like, i remember yeah, yeah. peter dinklage was <laughs> yeah in it. it's all oh, right yeah, yeah i remember that yeah oh let's get pedro pascal on an x-men movie, i'm sure please. well he's no he's going to fantastic four yeah he's no fantastic i don't four. want it there <laughs> he's reed it's richards too late. Uh, an x-men oh fuck i mean his He's basically going to be in an X-Men movie. I think this is where they start bringing him in. Fantastic Four X-Men. Yeah. It's all coming off of Deadpool and Wolverine. Yeah. Okay. So obviously, listener, you have gathered from this that uh, we are and I have knowledge of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, mm-hmm. no matter how much we complain about it in right. other episodes. Right. So, I mean, I guess the big thing is if this is the kind of, I mean, it's a, it's a seed. It's not the beginning of it. No. That would be Iron Man. Right. Mm-hmm. But- I mean, so from X Men, mm-hmm. <laughs> right, leading to where we are now, mm-hmm. uh, like when you look back on this movie, does it does it? Do you feel like it is the beginning of this thing? This kind of is it a cancer that consumed Hollywood? <laughs> is it the best thing that's ever happened to the movies? You know what happened since? I, I don't think I don't think this movie is as responsible as like Iron Man is right. Like, cause this movie wasn't trying to, uh, create a franchise, right? This was just a test run to see if we can it do wasn't, it. Kind but of it thing. was definitely the spark. Yeah. Like people saw this and they're like, Oh, there's Ca- something here. Comic book movies can be highbrow and here. not for kids. Yeah. yeah. We, yeah. Don't, we don't, I don't think we necessarily, obviously, and Kevin thought you worked on this, but I don't think we get the MCU if we don't kind of start here and who knows how we can rewrite mm-hmm. history in that regard. But yeah, it starts with this. But it's come so far from this, but though. So it is so far from, is from this. The MCU, and we haven't seen the actual MCU as it is now. Do X Men? Yeah, like right. this is exactly. still but the only representation of it. We I have yeah, X Men movies that are like in two different time periods. I know that's the problem. Sorry. Stop timeline hopping. This movie has no time shifts. This movie takes place over what, like a week, maybe? For all we know, like in we, one universe. Yeah, like let's stop hopping universes. Stop complicating yeah. timelines. Just this is like You're a not slice like of Deadpool like and Wolverine. Then. <laughs> this is like a slice of like do. character drama that just yeah. happens to be a comic book movie. Take that approach. Like that's I mean Logan worked too for the same yeah. reason, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, like, I really am at that point where I'm just like, I just don't need it anymore. Give right. Me, give yeah. me like a 20 year break from superheroes. Right. Stuff. Right. Or do like the X-Men 97 TV show where I can choose to opt in if I want, but it's not like yeah. a huge commitment, you know? Right. That being said, I hate that I want to see Deadpool and Wolverine. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I know. No, it's, yeah. I want to see it. I guess the thing that like, that always kind of troubled me about like the Marvel Cinematic Universe, I liked what it was doing. Yeah. Right. When it yeah. was building out, it's like, oh, we're going to actually like bring characters from comic books. Books into yeah. other stories and we don't have to have them in their own thing and it's like okay that's fine and it built 
kind of to this like uh, you know end game, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Uh-huh. Yeah. and it's like okay, it's this ten year thing that we're gonna do, and it, uh, okay. Like, but the fact that it became so successful that every studio in Hollywood tried to replicate it, yeah. I think. It, so it's like, can you blame Marvel for its own success? Is it just the idea that I mean now? everything that you know they think about it it's like it's got to be a property that you've heard of uh you know that we can sell merchandise toys comic books and uh, i don't even know they sell kind of video whatever the theme park you know it was like what just they turned movies into they all Mm -hmm. have to be interlocking we sign you up for three movies so now the halloween movies can't be like uh, just (laughs) a scary movie it's got to have like well we signed them for three you're like but it's a horror movie it doesn't work like a marvel movie where we have I don't necessarily you know, blame Marvel. I blame the studios that don't back anything else. Don't back it. Well, yeah. I, you blame. Uh, but they're doing it because they know, like, hey, we can make money on this. And people aren't movies. going to. Yeah. Everything else is such a risk, you know, to to spend money on some yeah, smaller. I get that, but. Take yeah, I mean, rest. I think people have take, definitely taken bad ideas from what the MCU has done. Maybe. The Dark Universe. No, that's not a bad idea. That's a good one. I'm I mean, all down yeah, the, well, the idea is, Keep yeah, the going. execution was not good because yeah. you got to come out of the gate with something good at least, and we got the mummy. Yeah. Um. Oh man, I've always well, I've wanted to bring it here just because like I've never seen it, but I want to know how they fucked it up. But uh, we'll yeah. see. But no, I think people have taken bad ideas from that. Again, dark universe, especially when you make one movie and then like your universe is gone. Yeah. So uh, yeah, yeah, they fucked that up. So people have taken bad ideas. People have taken good ideas from them um we've gotten some great stuff out of it Has, like, it, it definitely changed how they made how they made movies for yeah. a good chunk that's of time sure. yeah that's for sure and, and you know some people get out of the system some people get back into it and, you know um yeah it kind of just depends but a lot of it yeah i mean they're responsible for a lot of kind of what we're looking at right now and i think like some of it is you know this movie has that kind of um, origin story kind of thing where I guess this is also maybe because of the era that it comes from, right? Where you're, you're doing that um, <clears throat> in order to get the mainstream audience into our fantastical comic book thing, which they're not exposed mm-hmm. to. We have to try and like bring an era of reality that started in the Holocaust. I think that's part of, you <laughs> Let's know. Let's ground this movie. How do we do that? Well, we only it. have a few options. It's like, mm-hmm. here's imagery and stuff that you recognize in characters. It's like, okay, I understand what their, you know, their points of view are. Yeah. Because it's grounded in reality. And so they're trying to, like, uh, uh, you know, all the origin stories have that kind of resonance. But then, you know, you end up. You can't watch or like, I don't care about the blue Beatles origin, you know, like, <laughs> you know, and so we're just getting so much of that, mm-hmm. that it kind of just it, is, tires is that, you out. And you're yeah. like, you know, I like, you know, the, the, the Spider-Man origin story, Peter Parker being this like awkward teen who has to learn how to, you know, he can do this weird stuff in the cafeteria. The thing with this movie <laughs> is that they, they've like, yes, the characters are figuring out who they are along with the movie, but they're doing it all in like the first act. Like by the end of the first act, Rogue knows like, ah, oh, if I touch people, I absorb their powers. Right. Like, and I, if I do it too long, I put them in a coma. Yeah. And like, we get that introduction to her, like, which they're really double downing on. This is serious because we go from Holocaust to girlfriend, putting her boyfriend in a coma yeah. immediately. <laughs> like that's the next scene. And then after that, it's the cage fight. So it's like, this is serious guys. Mm-hmm. Bad things are going to happen to these people. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, where can you, you can't, wa- you can't keep mm-hmm. watching that, I guess, mm-hmm. like all the time. So they get right. like, you know, and then you get bloat, I suppose, with too many um, yeah. TV shows. And, mm-hmm. and how many you know, Marvel movies are coming out this year? And one. how many TV shows are coming in between? I think there's one movie slash show coming out. This well, year. didn't that last one do really terrible? What Which was one? that? Mar- the Marvels? They, oh, no, yeah, anybody go see movie? that? Yeah, that last yeah. movie, didn't it? That might That's why really they're taking bad? a break. We only yeah. get Deadpool and Wolverine this year. They're like, mm-hmm. hopefully we can do this. Because I, I have a feeling they're uh, gearing up to launch. Once we get X-Men and Fantastic Four, we're going on another long... Oh, long no, thing. don't say that. Don't, I don't think so. That I think that's there. why we're getting the break now. It's like Deadpool Wolverine kind of resets some stuff and sets other stuff up, and then we go into another long... I wonder if it's like a writer's strike thing, too, you know, because we're going to see some I'm sure that gaps in the schedule because we, we, nothing was being written for 10 months. You know? we all, 
want to see Deadpool and Wolverine. Yeah, I'll go oh, see yeah. it. I do want to oh, see it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so they've, they've figured out, I, like, here's, I'm going like, for people Hugh will do that one. Like, I'm well, going for Wolverine. Like, the, I've watched yeah, this guy for 24 for, years. We're going for the same lead-up that we had for the Avengers. It's yeah. The same right. thing. They've been leading up to this for so long. They yeah. really have. I mean, Ryan Reynolds, has been, it, both as himself and as Deadpool, have been talking about yeah. Yeah. The, the fun of Deadpool. It's like, he's been talking about getting Wolverine slash but Hugh I, Jackman into a movie yes. for, like, the past five years. I do love that this is, like, a redemption game yeah mm. like because mm-hmm. they were together once in an exxon movie yeah and it's yeah. just it was bad and, yeah. I, yeah. and i forget about yeah. that yeah. Yeah. i'm like oh shit we had it yeah. ryan reynolds had Hugh it. jackman in a movie see, the worst x-men movie the worst wolverine movie ever and that's the oh. thing is the credits to that movie set up such an interesting premise and then the movie is terrible like the credits are of him going through time playing these different roles throughout history like yeah. he's in the civil war and all yeah. this stuff it's like no there's your movie right there that's a great movie like <laughs> if you're gonna do timeline stuff follow wolverine through time you yeah. know yeah. like that oh, would yeah. be cool that's the fun stuff yeah. i'm sure there's been whole comic book arcs of, i know right, right? Yeah. yeah just him going through that. Like, ah, japan and yeah, shit how yeah. Does, yeah i mean how yeah. does wolverine act through time well, right. yeah, but we're go. literally getting a redo <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> they they deserve it though that first they one is so bad it. yeah yeah mm-hmm. yep yeah mm-hmm. well we, do we deserve it <laughs> uh, do we um, see. Well, I guess, yeah. I, uh, I thank you for listening for the, this is the Marvel episode. I mean, <laughs> God, like on the Saturday that. Night Freak Show, we've we've talked about Marvel movies and other alluded to them. We watched Howard the Duck. That's right. Yeah. We, yeah. Well, not a Marvel yeah. movie, but a Marvel And property. The Punisher. We watched the, pun- the Dolph Lundgren one, didn't we, like way back in the... Mm-hmm. Did we? I think you did. I, I wasn't here for it, but I think you have did. Have you? Maybe I don't we think haven't we done have. that. We did Captain America. Did. Captain America. No, I don't think we have because I've always watched it. Done I don't think we've done oh, the wow. yeah. Punisher before. Are you looking there. at me because you know I love Dolph Lundgren? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm going to announce it for next week. Like, we're watching The Punisher, the Thomas Jane one <laughs> <laughs> with Kevin Nash <laughs> as the Russian. Who was also, uh, Ray also with Rebecca Romaine Stamo? Is she in that Yeah. Yeah, she's in that one, right? Yeah. 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 I wouldn't be mad. Yeah. It's not a bad movie. Kevin Nash was up for the role of Sabretooth in this movie. I believe that. But at this point, it's like everybody was. Everybody was. Yeah, Seriously, if you try to try to sift through the IMDb trivia and pick out actual trivia instead of this person was rumored, because that is all of it, because yeah. literally everyone in Hollywood was up for oh, some role. Sure. Oh, the yeah. next one has to be like Captain America, right? They're shooting that. Harrison Ford took over for William Oh, yeah, Hurt. Brave New World. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're going to have Red Hulk and all that oh, shit. Okay. And we got Anthony Mackie Captain about this. America. Captain America, mm-hmm. yeah. So I don't know. We'll see if uh, they, they can keep. They the... convinced Chris Evans to come back, right? That's what I read. No. I read recently that he's coming back for something for Secret a, Wars, probably a cameo on something, Secret or, Wars. or he's on a TV, you know, or something. Well, there's a, a, big, there's a, a, big, no, there's a big build up to the next Avengers movies. We've got no. uh, the one was going to be Kang Dynasty, but Secret Wars is the one where they get everyone back together. To, uh, <laughs> we can't do this anymore. <laughs> we had Endgame. It's over. That's right. You feel like you oh, studied. Jesus. You studied <laughs> no, for a shit. test, right? You passed it, and then, and then there's no. a ton of extra credit that becomes like it's. A full this another is literally course. the same thing as the nightmare when I have to go back to high school because yeah. I never really graduated. Yes. I have that nightmare all yep. the time. Yep. Or you're like one credit I, short and you got to go through this class. Oh my God. But I have to go back as yep. like an almost as an adult woman. with yeah. teenagers, and I'm so terrified of them. It's like the scariest. They're so scary. Ever. It's yes. so scary. I couldn't. That's I, how I'm I not tough about, enough to be around yeah. teenagers. That's how I feel about more Avenger movies. Yeah, yes, exactly. <laughs> not many bog witches have that power. All right. Well, we're going to go around the table. We're going to tell you what we thought of the original X Men movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, but first, what I call you a wood goblin? <laughs> I think that's something what it was. like that. Swamp goblin, maybe. Uh, yeah, yeah, something yeah. like that. Right. Yeah. The continually evolving <laughs> Michaela. My future life. Yeah. <laughs> I think devolving. Devolving. He's got, yeah. Oh, yeah. Devolving. Yeah. 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 I'm going to turn into goo like Bruce Davis. <laughs> <laughs> swamp goo. Ah, uh, my. Uh, I've achieved my <laughs> ultimate form. <laughs> goo. goo. Swamp goo. God though. damn it! You're going to be happy. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> You're gonna be everywhere. I just let just let me explode on some kids, and I'll be I'll be happy. (laughs) (laughs) That's how I want to go out. There you go. Uh, Halle Berry doesn't deserve that, but those kids (laughs) gather on some local ruffians. (laughs) Um, Okay, so uh, we're we're gonna tell you what we thought of the movie, but first we're going to read some of your mail, and in order to do that, we're gonna have to summon our mailman Igor. Bring us the mail. 
Masters! Masters, the mail! I've got the mail! So many letters, our followers are rising. Rising. All right, thank you, Igor. I bet he melts into goo every night and then reconstitutes in the morning. He definitely explodes all over kids. <laughs> she said it. Uh, okay. She said it. Um, well, we should let the good folks at home now know how they can play along on this interactive portion of our show by following along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Or X. At Sat Freak Show. Or by email. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or on Instagram and threads at Saturday Night Freak Show. Um, MF Mad, the keeper of the Saturday Night Freak Show Ooh. Wall of Fame, wants us to know that, yes, we have put... Well, he's... Well, okay, I'm going to go with we have one Wall of Fame and one Hallway yes. of Fame yes. inductee. The Wall of Fame is Anna Paquin. Oh, Yay. welcome. Yay. Because we have Most watched X-Men. Uh -huh. We have watched Trick or Treat. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. And we also watched Scream 4. That's oh. right. Open of that, yes. I forgot about that. Uh, oh, two of those are mine. There you go. Yes. Well done. I'm yep. back. Mm, same. Um, we're also inducting Brian Peck to the Hallway of Fame, and you're like, who in the hell? Oh, that sounds familiar. So now, do you remember? Yeah, bad reason. Scuzz. Uh, Scuzz. Is it that Brian Peck? It is that Brian oh, from shit. Return of the Living Dead? Okay. Was also in Return of the Living Dead three. Okay. And. X Men. He was a okay. hot dog stand patron, yep. uncredited. And it's that Brian Peck. It's, that's okay. It's that's not sucks. good. Brian Peck. Yeah, that's not good. No. Well, uh, oh, we forgot to put his picture up. Oh no. Oh no. It fell in the trash. Oh no. Banana Peck when no. you're. Banana Peck yeah. 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 is in the mail. All right. About tonight's movie, X Men. Justin Fields writes in and says, "This is the movie that changed comic book adaptations forever." Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think so. I don't yeah. think you can say otherwise. Really. I think it revived them. Yeah. Because what are the comic book adaptations that we have before this? Batman and Batman, Superman. Yeah. Superman. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, Batman was a big deal. Superman was Super, yeah, yeah. a big deal. Yeah. Uh, Michael Whitaker says, as with the Constantine movie, I think this one gets a lot of passes on comic accuracy just because it's competently made and someone took the subject matter seriously. Yep. Because yeah. of this, Sam Raimi, Spider-Man, and Blade, which I don't think gets the credit it deserves sometimes, Agreed. it showed to Hollywood that comic book movies could be profitable ventures for studios. Yeah, and that they and were like for way. adults, not just for something for kids. And yeah. then Sony, Sony yeah, made them the rated same R, way yeah. for the next 25 years. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, you kept listing all of the of the uh, Marvel movies of this era. I'm like, well, we can put uh, Morbius back in there and take Venom and throw it back into oh, 2000s. And yes. I'm like those all count for early 2000s movies because they feel like it. They feel like it. <laughs> I didn't That's hate right. the first Venom. They were oh, all, no. yeah. they were all Sony movies, weren't they? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. No, uh, this Sony is Fox and, Fox. and yeah. yeah, and yeah. and uh, uh, Fantastic they are Four of the Fox. same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And Fantastic Four has already had a reboot. Oh okay. yeah, yeah. I forgot about yeah, that one. That no yeah. one, the Josh Trank one. <laughs> yeah. that no one I saw. Don't talk about Wasn't um, what's his face in that? Jordan, Whiplash? Michael B. Jordan was in it. Uh, Miles Teller was that in guy. It. Yep. Uh, Amara yeah. Amara was in it. Kate Mara was yep. in it. Amara. Yeah. I was who like, was, which one? Wait, who are we missing? Some dude was Justin was Doctor Grimm. Doctor Doom ben Grimm. was uh, the guy from Nip Tuck. Oh. No, 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 no. That, that was in the first was two the first original. Oh, was in the original. Julian was the McMahon one. was yeah. Doctor Doom, which is still good casting, I think. For yeah, no. Wait, so we've already so. had three Fantastic Four movies, and none of them are good. <laughs> none of them are good. <laughs> this seems none like a bad gamble. It just gives that they're not re really interesting. They're not okay. interesting. Is they're it not. heresy? They're not no, interesting. They're not. See, and this is my point. Why are we still taking risk on these stupid superhero movies and not taking a risk on a new original content? And you know they're yeah. gonna coast. On, they're gonna coast on Pedro Pascal popularity. You know this know whole movie is built that. around that. You know it. I don't care. I know, but a lot of people do though. Yeah, because a lot of people now, do. Oh no, Mr. Fantastic is now a sexy daddy. Yeah, exactly. That he will be is. it. I know. <laughs> I know, and that's what's gonna draw you to that yep. movie. It will. <laughs> <laughs> well, chili. when it's on Disney Plus. <laughs> yeah, there you go. The, well, hey, there you go. I think I stopped uh, paying for Disney Plus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know. Canceled your Marvel subscription. You are in saying. some way or another paying for Disney Plus. <laughs> oh, 100%. 100%. Well, Somehow. Uh, Chili I'd Morrison move. writes in and says, I find this movie hilarious from a 2024 viewpoint. Everything was black leather. Hugh Jackman's Wolverine was still built like a regular human being. I'm a thousand percent in support of today's veiny, roided out superheroes in movies. And the action scenes seem quaint by comparison. Still, kudos to the cast since basically every single one of them looks exactly the same 24 years later. Yeah. It's an amazing film for the time, but it does seem antiquated these days. 
Mm. I don't know if it feels antiquated. I, I don't think I would say that. I think like, it still feels I, one and the same of what we've, we're, like we're still watching. I think you're going to find out what we think about that in a few moments. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Adam Kaler says, what helped me get into this movie is the small reactions from characters that felt more real yes. and less like being in a comic book. Logan mm-hmm. asking, what's a Magneto? Yeah, rather yeah. than right. who's Magneto? There's yeah. a difference. Wolverine flipping Cyclops, the metal bird, and yeah. Cyclops yep. being amused by it. And who hasn't waxed poetic about amphibians and electricity? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I think James Marsden. Haven't we all? Is not getting enough credit for mm-hmm. his. A character you're not, I guess, exactly supposed to like right. in these movies because it's going up against Wolverine, who's mm-hmm. the character we all love. But mm-hmm. he's right. The way he reacts to it, and he gives him the metal burn, and he just laughs it off. He's yeah. like, that's pretty Cyclops funny. Cyclops did yeah. nothing wrong. Right. Cyclops did nothing wrong. <laughs> Cyclops is the Karen of, from The Office. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, yeah. You're yeah. right. Yeah, he yeah. did nothing wrong. Did yeah. nothing wrong. Yeah. yeah, no. I like that one scene that they had to give. It was the, you know, where he, uh, uh, Professor X is like, you know, on death's door mm-hmm. and Cyclops says that thing of anything happens, I'll take care of him. It's yeah. like he mm-hmm. is like responsible for yep. everybody right. after. He's the team leader, I guess. Mm-hmm. After. Yep. Um, Steve Carney says, this is one of the first movies that my dad had on DVD. I watched it a lot of times. When I think of superhero movies, this movie, its sequel, and Raimi's first two Spider-Man films are what come to mind. Yep. They're so different and better than the last 20 Marvel movies. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's necessarily true, but they're good. I, I This made me want to watch X2. Like, yeah, I might X2 go home and put it on better. and go to bed, too. Yes. Like, I want to watch X2 yeah. right now. I want to watch it, Real too. bad. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, think I, I think I have the full-frame DVD at home. I think I might have to give it a watch. <laughs> <laughs> I bought it on accident. Uh, Travis sure Legler says, uh, I really wanted to like this movie. The casting of Patrick Stewart was perfect. We should later, or we would later learn that Hugh Jackman's casting was perfect. However, there's some good ideas here, but overall, it's kind of lackluster, and the movie feels like they try to take a concept Concept, like the Guyver movie and make it a little more serious in tone. X2 and Days of Future Past are better movies for X-Men movies, but this is an okay movie to lay on the couch and not really pay attention to. Which is what, what were you saying, Holly? Thumbs down. Thumbs down. Thumbs yeah. down. Uh Karate Warrior 2 says the only superhero Dumb. comic book movie that I've ever wasted my life watching. All I can remember is a fight on a damn wall. Oh shit, that's Wolverine. No. Uh, okay, well, maybe you haven't seen this movie then. Uh, damn, Simon damn Carter dumb. says, <laughs> I know I liked it at the time. I remember thinking they did a hell of a job with a fairly low budget. I haven't seen it in a long time to see if it still holds up, though. I guess I'll find out from you guys. You sure will. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I kind of wanted, like, I was thinking, because um, uh, Deadpool and Wolverine is kind of the catalyst for all of this. But since that's coming out, I'm like, where did we start with this? And I, I kind of wanted to go back and revisit these. And, like, so, I mean, this is a great opportunity mm-hmm. to... Just, you wanted to know where it all began. Yeah, mm-hmm. but to only watch like maybe like four movies. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, this is one, and then I'll find a couple more of yeah. this. Watch uh, this. Watch this. the second one, and then watch the first Deadpool. Maybe <laughs> maybe Logan. Days of Future Past. And Logan, Logan yeah. I'll go back yes. to. Maybe I'll watch the black and white version as well. Yes. Because yeah, so the black and white version is good. I like it. Logan it's is good. so good. Yeah. Well, uh, two weeks ago we watched a movie called Hollow Man. Jacob yes. Law's mm-hmm. right. Same there. opening credits. Yeah, <laughs> I promise you. They were all doing that back yep. then. They were same year, right? Two thousand. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Uh, Jacob Law says, I remember liking Hollow Man as a 13-year-old boy with some cool effects. Yep. With that said, does that mean Showgirls is in your future? Because that's some Saturday Night Free Show movie right there. We, yeah. We've talked about that. Yeah, I think it's, so. There's... How long is Showgirls? <sighs> I don't know. It's, two, it's over oh. 2, 2, 20. I'm going to yeah. go 2, 15, is it 2, really 20. really that long? Oh, no, I don't no. know. Oh. Stop two. that, Colin. It's at least two. There's some of it's that, an epic. Some of that movie is hard to watch. <laughs> yes. I yes. may. I mean, it's very open. It's two. It's two eight. Two eight. Two eight. Yeah, that was the same than I thought. My guess was about two. So, yeah, that makes yeah. sense. And uh, Jen Zombie says, to say I had a crush on Rona Mitra would be the oh, understatement yeah. of the millennium. I even watched her season three run on Nip Tuck, where she was having an incestuous relationship with her penis list brother there you go i and missed yeah, that storyline that right. that's oh. how much i loved her wow. how do you okay. how i know i have questions i don't we, episode, we, we, I guess. We, don't, we don't have time we don't have time to get them here i'm so i'll, so I'll skip them I, but i, I have that, i was like i don't know that anyone can answer your nip no your nip, season right. three yeah. okay season three there okay i never watched that show i didn't either yeah. it was, seemed a little too and much just yes from that that wasn't that a ryan murphy to. show yeah yeah yeah, yeah. well yeah, yeah. that Julian guy McMahon. is known for taking things too far so he really yeah is. that i remember that show just being like i did like um 
Capote, the mm-hmm. feud one. That was really gotcha. good. Oh, was it good? That was really good. Oh, okay. All right, so now we're going to go around the table and tell you what we thought of X-Men, starting with Holly. Me. What did you think of X-Men? You know what? I liked it. Mm. Yeah, I was wondering if it was going to hold up, and I think it does. And I, Especially in our HD to our, new, yes. uh, to our virgin yeah. eyes, really, the HD version. I was almost like nervous for the movie. Mm-hmm. Like, I wanted it to do well. I was like, I'm rooting for you, because mm-hmm. um, I was afraid, because I, I remember the claws. I remember the claws were just way too cartoony, but actually watching it again, I'm like, you know what? They're not that bad. Mm-hmm. They're really not. Um, so I think it holds up pretty well. And I think it is that small scale that you were talking about that it's refreshing to us. I mean, since we're all kind of suffering that superhero fatigue feeling, um, watching this, we're like, yeah, get back to the roots. Mm-hmm. Get back yeah, to the Yeah, because the future movies, like, they're lifting up whole baseball stadiums yeah. and dropping them on people. It's just like, calm down. Mm-hmm. Like, I like that this is smaller scale and it's literally just like, oh, I, I need to go save this little girl that I promised to take care of. Yeah. We're also going to, like, save humanity, I guess, but it's mostly so I can mm-hmm. get that little girl back. Yes. And I just like how it's small. It's kind of quaint. Um, and yeah, I think the special effects hold up surprisingly well. Yeah, um, they weren't too. offensive. There's a few moments that it was slightly laughable in comparison to what we have nowadays but for the most part i think it was pretty good yeah um you want laughable and offensive go watch x-men's uh, origins wolverine <laughs> yes some of the worst yeah. wolverine claw oh effects God. i've Those, ever seen in my yeah. life do you they remember stutter and bad. blink do i don't understand it do you remember when the rough cut of that leaked on the internet there was a rough cut oh, of that movie yeah. Yeah. and like it was green lines that said claws here yes, <laughs> because I the effects that. hadn't been dropped in well, yet. Well, they didn't oh, do a good that job between wild. that and the theater because I yeah. could not believe I'm like, how is this? How did right. they release this movie? Yeah, in theaters? it was it, oh, that was not good. But this movie, yeah, it's it's it holds up surprisingly well. Um, I someone said it was lackluster. I don't think so. I think it was. I, I think it's a good storyline. It's decent writing. Um, it, there are some jokes that made us cringe, but for the most part, I think it's it's a solid movie. I think it's still entertaining. Um, yeah, I was, I was proud of it. It pulled through. <laughs> oh, good job. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You want you want to root for the first one. You're just I like, did. Oh, you did do good. I was like, oh, please still be good. And yeah, I still liked it a lot. So um, I'm going to recommend it. I think it's still a solid X-Men movie. Colin, what do you think? Um, it was, it was kind of interesting, you know, watching it again and... I don't come from, like I said, I, I guess I was the target audience for this movie where they were trying to get somebody who wasn't familiar with the comics mm. to kind of come on board with it. And, um, you know, when you're watching it tonight, there's like there's a lot of uh, filming techniques that they employ, keeping characters in shadow, not really showing yes. you the visual effects, you know, uh, which may be like light Magneto throughout the entire it's so movie. Cool. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah, yeah, you know, stuff like that feels like classic Hollywood kind of yeah. stuff that yeah. you don't really get in like the modern or like any modern movies, I guess, you know, they, oh, the big budget ones anyway, mm-hmm. sure. the, yeah. the big CG Everything's spectacles. Everything's bright and fast and in your face. Yeah. 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 And usually in these movies and in this one too, and I guess this is why it's not like a great movie because the uh, ultimate, you know, whatever, uh, uh the plot devices and mechanisms are like, okay, they're just these big spectacle things to kind of hold, you know, hold the plot or, you know, the, the events on, but the character moments are kind of what I came away with going like, well, these are good actors and these are good moments. And I understand like who these people are. Mm. And that's why I'm like, Oh, this is like a pretty solid movie. I think the second one, the irony, as I say, I like, you know, like, uh, the origin stories, but once that's out of the way, you kind of liberate the characters to like, okay, now we get the actual like yeah. adventure, yeah, like Spider Man Two. Yeah, we know who they are, so let's get to yeah, X Men Two, Spider Man Two, the ones that come to mind. That yeah. like, you know, the second one's better than the, than the first one. I still dug this movie. Um, I don't know how much of it was nostalgic because as I was watching, I'm like, oh, I remember these scenes. Mm-hmm. Sure. Um, but it's well executed. I think they achieved what their goal was. I think it did kind of add, uh, you know, obviously the themes that it's dealing with uh, resonate like across, you know, time. So mm-hmm. um, it's still um, it's still good. I like the X-Men. Yeah. Sean, what do you think? 
Still good. I'm I'm kind of surprised. Again, uh, I'm glad I'm finally singing <laughs> finally singing in HD. <laughs> we keep making this joke because nobody owns this on Blu-ray. We only I, have DVD. I've, I've only have a DVD. Yeah. Yeah. Never this. upgraded it. Yeah. Never upgraded. It. And like I said, I have the full frame mm-hmm. DVD of X2 because I accidentally like th- th- I, I I'm bought sure that. I sold mine to Disc Replay. <laughs> right, yeah. Oh yeah, because there were a ton of them there. But back in the day, they used to have on the shelves. You could buy a full frame yes. DVD or a full a widescreen DVD, mm-hmm. and it, Crazy times, <laughs> crazy times. <laughs> then they had the flipper. Yeah. Where it was on one side was yes. oh Jesus. I hated those. The other I hate, side was the white. I hate, no. oh, I hate, I hate double those. sided DVDs. Mm-hmm. Oh Jesus. Um, but yeah, like um, I'm glad to watch it again. You know, 24 years later, it's. Um, I think a lot of what makes this still really good is that I, I think Hugh Jackman's a big part of it. The fact that he's still doing this role years later, I think, helps. Going back and seeing where it comes from. He looks like such a baby. He's mm-hmm. everyone looks like thirty-one I mean, years such old. Such a baby. Oh wow. Thirty-one years really? old. Yeah. Really? Okay. Damn. And now he's like close to how old Ian McKellen was in this movie. Right. Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Craziness. Um, but yeah, really just still I think a really good introduction to these characters. More low key than anything you'll see nowadays, which is kind of nice. You know, it felt like it was just them. Yeah. You know, like it really it, did. It was like just them mm-hmm. against everything. Yeah. Now you don't have that. Like, yeah, does the world even know like this is all the X Men even exist? Because they know about mutants, but do they know the X Men are doing no, all this that's shit? the thing. No. Yeah, that's not a worldwide known thing, right. which it would be now in the mm-hmm. MCU. So it is kind of nice to keep it smaller. Um, again, we get a lot more with that, we get a lot more character moments between these people, which I think. Because you have those moments, the action scenes mean more because, you know, oh, I like these people. I kind of hope they don't die. Like, and I think that's as simple as you need to get. Right. Oh, I like them. I hope they don't die. Yeah. And so you're hoping for that throughout the entire movie. Um, uh, well played by everyone. I think Patrick Stewart and Ian McKellen are great off of each other. That's why they, you know, kept going for so many years. Mm-hmm. Um, they do great work with these characters. Yeah. It's still a fun movie. Again, seeing a guy with fucking claws just kind of beating people. It's still <laughs> cool. cool. Yeah. And I don't know why, but it's still fucking cool. <laughs> oh, um, I yeah. remember X2 was the one that really gave me the scene I wanted to see. Yeah. Where he was just tearing through dudes in yep. the, oh, when yeah. they attacked the school. When they attacked the school yeah. and everything. Oh, yeah. And he's just going after everybody. Yeah, I guarantee you all four of us are going to watch X2. Yeah. 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 At some point, we're all being like, let's see. Look Colossus is in that for like a second. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hears, yeah I remember see. how much of a bitch bro is in that movie. That kid's an asshole. Pyro. Who I mean, spoiler alert, he's coming back for the Deadpool Wolverine movie. <laughs> oh, God. Same actor. That guy's a loser because he can't generate it. He can only control right, it. I can only control he's, the fire. He, he, as generate. he says, I'm useless without a lighter. Yeah. So yeah. And that's very true. Then he gets yep. a little shark lighter. Oh great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um but yeah. We uh, should have a watch party. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean we probably should. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, just uh, still a fun movie. I like the characters in this. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, uh a fantastically well cast movie Mm -hmm. um where you could still probably and and they've shown up in way later like 15 years later these characters have still shown up as these actors have still shown up as those characters and you're just like oh because kelsey Grammer showed up as 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 beast Mm -hmm. not too long ago in a movie Mm -hmm. marston shows up every now and again famke jansen like they still show up i they're still kind of stamped as these characters we'll see what happens as we move forward with Mm -hmm. the x-men and the mcu and Again, as they start probably recasting everybody. Yeah. Um, I know we're getting Famke Jansen in the the new one. Yeah, and Kelsey yeah. Grammer's still the voice of even Digital Beast mm-hmm. in the latest yes. Marvel movie. So <laughs> who knows what goes on and goes forward? But it all kind of it all started with this one, and it's still good. And I'm kind of really happy about that. Um, yeah, I recommend it. Obviously, you you should all watch it. It's really good. Michaela. Take us home. Uh, I yeah, I love this movie. I mean, I this movie made a huge impression on me as a kid. I've seen it so many times, yes. but about this time last year, I rewatched it and seen it for a while. And like, it was really jarring to get used to all the wire work at first, just because I'm not used to seeing it anymore. But I was like, oh my god, this movie's so nostalgic. But I was surprised at how well it held up, and I just really like the characters and how they intersect with each other and how their relationships kind of change the dynamics of the group. And like, I love the character dramas. Like I'm kind of surprised that we haven't gotten like some prestige TV series about like other students at Xavier's school, Mm. like a a prestige TV series Mm. about the school, you know, or something like that. Yeah. There've been half-assed pseudo attempts. Exactly. And that's the thing. There are so many 
sci-fi properties that rip off this formula yeah. you know of like these kids with the magical powers that are outcasts so you know many. and oh my god that's the so thing many. that pisses me i think that's more what dilutes the x-men than anything else is the the, the fucking, knockoffs the bad yeah. rip-offs where they're just like okay it's an x-men movie yeah well, what was X-Men that movie. i know x-men oh kind of ruined yeah. it for everyone who's like these people have special abilities and you can't do that right really much today without being like well yeah. it's an x-men yeah. movie like yeah. when we got new mutants yeah oh you remember that one well there was that other one a couple years Years ago, where yeah. they, we had the, the 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 black girl was the main character. Yeah, she had. You remember this? And I yes. remember the trailer. It's a, and I can't yeah, remember it's what yeah. fucking, I don't remember what it was. <laughs> yeah. but it's, I'm like, this is a fucking X Men movie. Yep. Yeah, literally yeah. that without being called X Men. Yeah. Well, I would even say. Doctor Sleep is kind of an X Men movie, know, but that's the thing that like, like <laughs> Marvel has colored everything. Yeah, yeah. That they all yeah. everything else feels like an X Men. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. <laughs> yes, it does. And you know, I do think the two best performances of Hugh Jackman's career are Logan and Prisoners, and I think oh, that Prisoners he peaked so with good. both those movies. And but I mean, it's it kind of bumps me out that it took how like what fifteen twenty years of. Uh, X Men movies to get the Logan movie we deserved, you know. It had to, it had to come at the end of his run, you know. Yeah. But I mean, it was go, fucking though. good, though. Yeah, I was gonna yeah. Say, that's, that's what you gotta do. And I feel like Logan was a little bit of a recalibration for this too, because it's like, wait, no, these can be serious, like oh, yeah. prestige mm-hmm. movies about like grappling with aging and how yeah. things change. You and, didn't think the X Men can make you cry? Yeah. Oh, the, the oh, trailer alone will God. make you fucking <laughs> sob. Well, the way they have that Johnny Cash trailer set up. Like, I never oh, thought you I'd still have time. Yeah. <laughs> Man, it's, yeah, uh, man, that is one of my. If I need a good cry movie, I will watch Logan because uh, that movie is movie. fucking sad. And just because it, it just feels honest about his character yeah. at that point, mm-hmm. but it has a finality to it too. Yeah. Oh, that yeah. is really just, oh man, what a great movie. But yeah, uh, thank God we got this movie because we wouldn't have had Logan without that. But yeah, what, what year did that come out? 2017. Yeah, so listen sure. to our best of yeah episode yes. from that year. Yes. Probably yeah, because yeah. I know I picked it. That I year. picked it. I know yeah. <laughs> um, no, I, lo- I like how quaint this movie feels, and I like that it seems to have its own personality and its own vibe. I love the 2000s. Everything is metallic, minimalist, and glowing. It looks like a TLC music video could have been shot in any hallway. Um, I, the casting is perfect. So many A-list stars, and like even when they're not doing very much, it's still great to have them around. Uh, this is more of the content I would like to see if we're going to have to get it, but I agree with you, Holly. Like, Let's just not at all. How about we don't say we did you know yeah. um but unfortunately i don't think it's gonna go that way <laughs> how dare yeah. you leave money on the table how right exactly you. exactly um yeah I, I gotta recommend it it's great i i love the first two movies now i feel like i have to revisit the third because apparently i, I remember do, more of the third than i, I thought think you do. i think i just didn't like everybody getting cured at the end is what i didn't like temporary like well at that point in time, it was uh, it, we didn't know because it was he the last the stand. Piece. He moved the he moved the piece, right? At the end but of it the was movie. the we last stand. Gonna, it's the last like movie. Everyone dying at the end of fucking I Infinity know, War. Was they, able they're to not touch. dead. They're I, not, they didn't like, lose their powers. I don't know. I didn't like. I didn't like but the was, end of yes. that movie. Yeah, but you know, maybe I'll give it a rewatch. I, I'm with you, Sean, though. I'm not going to go watch all of them because no. I really don't like those later ones, like the days of future past and the, that like all the time bad. first class. I don't like all the time travel bullshit. I don't want to see They really that. get a lot. I, I don't like the, what's it, Sophie Turner? Sophie that, Turner. Yeah. She's just, yeah. It's just not. She can't push her accent down. It's really hard for her mm. to do an American accent. Dark Phoenix was very obvious. That's mm. not the role for her. No. But it's too bad because it feels like it should be on paper. It feels like it should work, yeah. but it doesn't. I like her. Yeah. I like her, but that's just not the role mm-hmm. for her. Yeah. And also, Nicholas Holt also avoided being in Beast makeup a lot, that motherfucker, in those yeah. movies. He, he was just Nicholas Holt. And like, that's. Don't take the role if you don't want to do it, you yeah, know? It's like, you know, mm-hmm. I never. Yeah, I was going to say, I never saw Kelsey Grammer once not be Beast when right. he was in the movie. He right. was committed. He was yes. Beast the fucking whole way through. Yes. But yeah, recommend. There it is. You know what that means. It's freak show it's approved. It's a freak show that approved means, movie. You have means to start watch your it. rewatch of X Men now. Yes. You have to watch it for at least three movies. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. We won't make you go any farther. Okay, well, thank you for having stuck with us this far. Uh, next week we're gonna watch a movie that's chosen by Con. What are we gonna watch next week? Uh, we're gonna watch a legendary bad movie. Oh, I'm oh, no. taking a page from uh, Sean's sequel book. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but also, it's got werewolves in it, so Michaela will like this. It's Howling Two. Oh, I okay. almost picked this. I almost <laughs> picked this one. Yeah. Wait, what's your, this one called? Your sister is a werewolf. Is this well, your sister is a werewolf. Not on the tight on okay. the screen. Okay. It just says Howling Two, okay. but it's so your where did that come from? We'll discuss it next week. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, on the Saturday Night Freak Show, and we hope you'll join us for that. Until then, boils and ghouls, the basement is going dark.